Hi. I thought I was gonna be able to hold this whole stack, um, but it's really heavy, so I'm, I'm gonna put it down. I'm Juliana. I have an art business called Shaduga. I've been drawing for about 10 years, and I wanted to show you my sketchbook tour. Uh, every single sketchbook I've made over the last 10 years. Let's just get right into it. <laughs> so I started drawing with intent around like fifth or sixth grade. I found like a how-to anime book. I think like all of us started out that way. I wanted to make a sketchbook tour that was like really honest. Oh my God, I please. I feel like a lot of artists show a couple years into their journey and tailor their sketchbooks to be more social media friendly. My sketchbooks are definitely not social media friendly and I just wanted to like show off a very honest past 10 years of self-reflection and my artist growth. This was an OC I had. Do I really want to tell you her name? Her name was Shira Yuri. Let's just move on. Here was a painting I did of that one girl from Tokyo Ghoul. Do I have to say anything about this one? Okay, so this next one was in my duct tape phase. Yeah, I thought I was different. Here's more emo art. This actually became my OC Eleanor. Very edgy emo start to her character. You'll see more of Eleanor as we go on. She was probably one of the first OCs that I created. Here's some Death Note fan art. Maybe, you know, like in hindsight, Tokyo Ghoul and Death Note are not anime I should have been watching in like eighth grade. Even more Tokyo Ghoul fan art, nice. More edgy art. God, does the Tokyo Ghoul art ever stop? <laughs> Here's a drawing of only yellow characters that I never finished. Yeah, I never got back to this. This is like seven years old at this point. Okay, now we're getting into Black Butler fan art. The manga was way better than the anime. Some self-portraits that I made. Even more Tokyo Ghoul fan art. Attack on Titan was actually the very first anime that I watched back in 2014. Very good starter anime. I promise this video won't be only Tokyo Ghoul fan art. Did anybody watch Parasite? This was Mugi? Is it Mugi? Yeah, this was Mugi. Here's another OC I made. Her name was Ebony. I don't really know what I was going for with the music and these. Yeah, she like never really came back. This was the first drawing I ever made of my character, Anna. She has made a very hard comeback. I draw her pretty much every year. I think she's my muse. More Attack on Titan fan art. This is another character that I created called I. Her whole shtick was that she was like super paranoid about everything and she lived in like a super futuristic society. So that's why you have like the silver outfit here, the weird haircut. She's not as strong as a character as Anna and Eleanor. Oh my God. God, do you see the dust? This is what happens when you use cheap colored pencils. <laughs> I have no idea what's going on with hair. I'm seeing like a trend here. Mostly portraits, absolutely no hands, only hair and eyes at this point. This is Mikasa from Attack on Titan. Still have no idea what to do with the background. I had only been learning how to draw for like a couple of years at this point. More Attack on Titan, more Tokyo Ghoul, more Attack on Titan. <laughs> this is just all Tokyo Ghoul. We have a new contender. We have Swim. I don't even remember what the character's name was. He reminds me of Honey from Orin High School Host Club. But yeah, we're back to the classic. I don't really know what's going on here. <sighs> Official sketchbook number one done. Okay, this is the bad one. <laughs> I don't like looking at this one. I don't like revisiting it. I'm so sorry in advance. You guys saw the title and you wanted to watch this video, so you knew what you were signing up for. Let's just keep on going. <laughs> More of that, I don't even remember what this anime is called. Uh, the demon one, not demon, it was like way before Demon Slayer. I'll like put it in the text right here if I can find it. Back to our Tokyo Ghoul roots. Lots of like little sketches. That's like the one thing that has stayed true in my sketchbooks over all these 10 years. I'll just draw like random shit like this over here and then have like a sketch that I'm trying to finish over on the other end. This was from, yeah, no, I'm definitely not gonna remember off the top of the noggin right now. Just lots of random, <laughs> random sketches. Clearly I was not ready for it yet. My OC Anna and Shira Yuri. She very rarely makes a comeback after this sketchbook. Here's a new OC that I was trying out. It was like a pretty boy, something like that. I never drew him again. I don't draw men. They're just boring. I really like drawing women and feminine bodies. Enjoy it while it lasts. There's like absolutely no shape to the head. The braids are like not doing anything right now. I don't know what's going on with the body. At least I tried, you know. More random sketches. I remember drawing this one. I wanted to practice cell shading. There's like absolutely no anatomy going on right here. The head is way too big. Back to more cell shading, more Tokyo Ghoul. I promise I draw more things. This is a drawing of all of the OCs that I had had at that point. Anna in the middle with Shira Yuri praying on her. I have no idea what kind of relationship they were having at that point. Eleanor over here. I'm not really sure who this is. Maybe Ebony? But um, pretty much nobody comes back except for Eleanor and Anna. I was trying to draw stuff on Instagram and like I tried posting it on there to try and grow my art account. Lots of cringe. And that's another thing too with this sketchbook. It's obviously like oriented this way so I don't know why I kept 
I started watching more Kyo Annie Studios animations at this point. That's my favorite animation studio to date, and I really wanted to emulate more of that style here. Here's more stylistic drawings of a random character. I still haven't really incorporated like a lot of color into my sketches. I have always really preferred to do pencil sketches in my sketchbook. If I do add like more of a line art or color, it's really just like Sharpie or gel pen. I really prefer line art and sketching and stuff traditionally. Fan art of Aaron. I was really starting to get happy with my chibi art style. This was the first time that I felt like I was drawing like a style that actually looked kind of good. Still obviously struggling with anatomy, but here's Armin. Here was another OC I created. Her name was Band-Aid Chan because of the band-aid on her face. Let's be real, it's literally just Hatsune Miku. Here was my 4th of July drawing. Just lots of chibi emotes, random emptiness on the page. Not really trying to be very aesthetic with anything. I was really proud of this drawing. I tried out a new art style here. I was obviously copying another style. Overall, I still think that this looks pretty good. Hands would not become like a thing that I'm comfortable with until like this year, 10 years later. Absolutely random stuff, drawing like whatever came to mind at the point and then giving up halfway. I had watched Noragami at that point. You know, I see people on TikTok now who are like my age drawing things that I still can't draw. And I feel like it kind of sets a bad example for a lot of other kids. It's just so unusual to have kids that young learning how to do these things. I don't want to sound like a boomer or anything like that, but it is a little discouraging to see so many <laughs> younger artists be so technically expert and I don't want to like discount any of their efforts but I think sometimes it's nice to take a look at what my art looked like when I was that age and seeing that it's totally okay to have like a bad art style at that time but it doesn't have to be perfect in order to you know keep going and improve I really like that one it shows her personality lots and lots of eye practices here was another comic that I had made maybe I shouldn't have done like an honest <laughs> sketchbook to <tour. laughs> the very first video I make for this channel is just exposing how much of an awful person I was as a kid. I think I was starting to get the hang of like hands at least. I mean, it doesn't look good. I was really proud of this drawing. I ended up making a full color version of it. Ah, oh, you know what? I actually don't really mind these hands. They definitely look interesting, but you know what? They're actually hands. I started incorporating a technique in my sketchbooks that I still do to this day. I'll practice out the poses as thumbnails before making the final draft on an actual piece of paper. Sometimes I'll just leave it in the sketchbook and just have the next page be like the final piece. This was a drawing of, this is yet another anime that I'm gonna have to put on the title right here. I really liked this anime, another KyoAni anime that I really enjoyed. I was really proud of this one when I first made it. I do think that this art style really encapsulates her personality better than any of their art style that I have done. Here's one of the thumbnails that I did for a draft. I believe this was... Oh yes, it was Tokyo Ghoul fan art mixed with Madoka Magica. <laughs> if Kaneki put on the Madoka dress, I don't know what was my hyperfixation with putting little pretty men in dresses, but I still have that to this day. Lots of practicing and giving up, trying to draw more men. You know, I appreciate the effort. Wow, I'm really not good at names today. I drew some corpse party fan art. It's the main character. I started watching Hyoka at this point, which is my favorite anime of all time. Here's Gre Greta. Greta? I have no idea what I'm talking about. More Black Butler fan art. My god, another one done. We got this, guys. That was the worst of it. We can do this. This is still, 10 years later, the largest sketchbook that I've ever drawn in. It's huge. I can't even get it in the camera. This is when I really attempted to understand composition a little better, trying to plan it out a little bit before I just dove right in. Immediately off the bat, I can tell that like my art style has improved slightly. I'm really not a big fan of this super tiny like anime eyeball. Eyeball, eyeballs, eye eyeball, eyeball, eyeballs. Guys, don't tell anybody this, but I used to be on Wattpad. I really enjoyed this time of drawing in my life. This was around 2015 or 2016. I saw the most growth in my art over these two years out of every other year that I've done so far. It was really, really hard for me to learn how to draw like three-fourths faces. Here's some drawings that I did of my brother and I for my grandma. I really got really big into D. Gray Man. D. Gray Man is by far my favorite manga ever. The anime is trash. Don't watch the anime. Katsura Hoshino's art style has influenced my style the most out of any other artist, maybe even more than KyoAni Studios. I have a very strong love for both of those creators. Every leg that I drew were like generic skinny anime guy legs. I just could not figure out how like thighs and knees worked. Okay, here we go. Now we can see the whole sketchbook. This size sketchbook is so overwhelming to me. I never went back to this size ever again. I used to take a lot of requests from friends, basically commissions, but 
doing it for free just so I could learn how to draw better and they would get some free art out of it too. I remember really enjoying how this one came out. Probably the first successful side profile that I've drawn yet. And of course it's Alan. Got really big into Haikyuu at this point and I undertook my biggest project of the time. I made a huge five foot long drawing for a friend of all of the characters from Haikyuu put together in that same way of the end scene from Dorarara. It took me all summer to make that. I spent a long time learning like each pose for the characters, what their faces will look like. Here's yet another drawing of my OCs. We have a nice Shira Yuri picture. She doesn't look actually insane in that one. And at the top we have Anna on the left and Eleanor on the right, obviously struggling with like arms and torsos and necks. I gave my character Anna overalls. That's kind of just like an outfit that has stuck with her after all of these years. I really should put her in a different outfit, but at least I can say I drew her in overalls before they became cool again. Are they still cool? More Instagram friend comments. Of course we have a lot of delicious what was that? Anyways, <laughs> we have a lot of the delicious decapitated head pictures. Um, Alan, my beloved. Lots of genuinely terrifying faces. If anybody knows me, they'll know that I love gel pens and I love Sharpies. Those are my absolute favorite way of inking today. Even more Instagram comic type posts. We really love this anime. Yet another one that I can't remember. I'll just throw the title up here. This video will be a nice collection of beautiful anime that you guys should take a look at. It was really huge in my anime phase at the time. I think I was watching like 20 anime at one point. This sketch of him came out so good. I haven't been able to do more than like cute faces at the time. This was the first time that I was actually drawing hands, full bodies. It didn't look good. I really tried to go beyond my boundaries. Now this sketchbook was I think the only sketchbook I ever abandoned. I never finished this one. I absolutely hated the texture of it. It was so smooth. I've always been a very messy, heavy sketcher, so I really need that textured linen. I don't know what it was about this sketchbook, but it was like my art style just turned off. We're like, towards the end of 2015, I think, starting to go into 2016. I don't understand what's going on here. This sketchbook, I think I tried. I went back and forth on it for like a year or two, just really trying to finish this one. This one was horrible. I've never gone back to finish it after about 2016. So this was when I really started to flesh out my character a little better. I really wanted to get a better understanding of how Anna acted as a character. Her best friend, still Eleanor, after all these times, they kind of have like a sister type relationship. And I just really enjoy those characters being together. Together. More facial practice. I can start to see a lot more of maybe not a good style, but a unique style at least. The eyes are doing way too much. Who cares that I didn't get anything past the neck correct? For some reason, I just performed best when I was drawing pretty boys in dresses. I should probably unpack that. Here I was following a tutorial on how to draw hair. I made a TikTok about it, essentially just like dividing up the hair into larger sections and then creating more detail as you flesh out the whole overall shape of the hair. That really changed changed the way I thought about hair and it's still a technique that I use. So like we have the bang part, back of the hair, top of the hair. And then once I had those layers fleshed out, I would go in and add more details, even more practice with it. I was obviously not understanding like physics. Oh yes. Now here's when I started watching Neon Genesis Evangelion. I really liked Asuka, so I gave it my shot with this hair shading technique. I was really, really proud of this drawing. Here's like a huge jump in time. The way I draw hair, the way my pencil works, the expression, the facial structure, everything is totally different. This is Anna and Eleanor, by the way. Possibly the only mob psycho fan art that I've done. Am I the only artist that didn't understand how to draw clothes, so I would just put a collar on everything? Like, that made it look better. I feel like it just makes it obvious that I don't know what I'm doing. I think this art style has character and it's a really nostalgic art style for me. I, I really enjoyed this period of art creation. I really started getting into gel pens. It looks like it would bleed really easily. That's like one of the things that I hated about this sketchbook was that I couldn't ink anything without it bleeding. I'm left-handed, so like pretty much anything I would draw on here would just immediately smudge. I had been taking requests that were essentially commissions and these were like my thumbnail sketches for both of them. I did a Haikyuu fan art and then a Frozen fan art for two different friends. Oh my God, this is a product of its time. This was was a Cruella drawing that I made, but I was really struggling with like understanding how the legs were going to work. This was so cute! This art style just really suits Anna the best. Her personality just is like best made for a TV style. Eleanor practices. I was really starting to get the hang of how thighs worked. Still didn't really understand knees, but I could at least get the gist down. I, I Obviously I gave up on the sketchbook if I'm just doing fucking math in it. 
I would say most of the sketchbooks after this point have an intense purpose. I think the style had improved, the anatomy had improved. You know what? Screw it. I think we deserve a break. I think we earned it. We've endured enough so far. It hasn't been easy, but we've been fighting uphill, and I think us soldiers deserve a break. And you know what's better than just taking a break? It's taking a cat break. So now I think we should take a moment and just enjoy some lovely videos of my cat. Welcome back, my friends. I hope that cat break was as enjoyable and pleasurable as you thought it was going to be. So with this sketchbook, I got it as a gift. I think most of my sketchbooks were gifts. I'm just now running out of sketchbooks after like 10 years. I don't think I've bought any of these sketchbooks. Overall, I really enjoyed the art that I made in this sketchbook. Most of the art in this sketchbook was made over the course of a summer in 2016. Immediately, we are greeted with a boy in a dress. I don't know what it was about me in this time in my life. Let's not investigate this. Let's just look at it, accept it, and move on. I feel like there is no direction in most of my sketchbooks, and honestly, I kind of like it that way. A lot of social media really wants and encourages people to have very intentional, direction-filled sketchbooks, and I think that's great for people who are wanting to build a portfolio, have like an artistic sketchbook that is just a collage of like amazing practices in different mediums, but I think there should be a place for unfettered chaos. Why is she staring at me like that? I do think there's a place for like just really unorganized messy, kind of honestly ugly art. It has to go somewhere, right? I mean, you have to make beautiful art through the ugliness. It has to be ugly at some point. Here was when I really started to feel like I had my own style that I really enjoyed. Eleanor, Anna, Shira Yuri, and I, those are like the four that I keep coming back to after all these years. I really like the style. More Band-Aid Chan, she came back. More attempts at hands. I remember really liking this one. This was the first time I did a stylistic eye that I just really liked, and I so I read you it over and over and over again to try and like memorize it as if like redrawing it over and over would implant it into my head. One thing I don't like about my sketchbooks is how they're always like facing different directions. This doesn't happen anymore. <laughs> but for now, please bear with me. We're still in the early years. This was a brutally honest sketchbook tour. There's 10 years here. I remember this. It was like my first time doing like an extreme perspective like this. I still think it's pretty good. At least I didn't give her like anime boobs, you know? The head perspective to the feet, still pretty good. I remember at this time I was getting committed from family members to draw them. You know, uh, if you're an artist, you can probably relate to the fact that once your family finds out you're an artist, it's like you're like a free money pot of art for them for like the rest of your life. Even though at the end of the day, all you really draw is like big boob anime girls. That was my experience at least. I did not have like a background in drawing houses or like real life families and actual children and adults. I just wanted to draw stuff like this. Fake boobs, just general weeb stuff. That's what I was so into. And you know, I feel like a lot of people that don't draw art, they I just don't get it. That was a lot of my experience in high school, just trying to like extend my style past things that I like enjoyed drawing. So I had to struggle with improving general anatomy and composition, but also trying to balance like the expectations of the family members around me. I really enjoyed this one. Braids were really difficult for me to articulate, even though I had my main character in braids all the time. Braids were still like really difficult for me to draw. Here's when I started to draw Overwatch for my friend. This was a huge undertaking this summer. I believe it took me a month or two to complete. We've got a cute little grumpy Conda from D. Grayman. I had practiced one of the manga panels to try and get some inspiration during an art block I had. Bleach the manga had like a huge impact on how I draw faces and expressions. Tons of Overwatch fan art. I really wanted to get a good idea of like the different tools used in each character. I quickly dropped this project. Each one would take me like six hours. At the time, there was only like 30 Overwatch characters. I remember being really proud of these drawings. I was still not very good at drawing men. I still think I drew men more then than I do now. I just like, they're just not fun. <laughs> I remember drawing this on the 4th of July. And I remember this 4th of July because, <laughs> do I really want to admit this right now? I spent that 
4th of July watching AMVs. No joke. I stayed up until like 2 a.m. watching AMV after AMV after AMV. This was the summer where I found out about Sean Wasabi and he changed my life. I listened to dubstep all the time and AMVs mixed with my favorite genre at the time and I'm embarrassed to admit it but it's my heritage. So just trying to understand like the anatomy of all the different Overwatch characters. I really enjoyed this drawing. Anna was kind of like a de-stress. She was like a character that was really comfortable for me to draw and she would always just brighten my day whenever I would draw her. It's something that I still feel the same way about. Here's when I started really fleshing out Anna's character more. I thought it would be cool if this super bubbly sunshine representing OC had like a super dark past. Anna was supposed to be this homeless child that was like orphaned. She eventually met Eleanor. She was a super, super grumpy little kid to be around, but eventually by being around Eleanor, she just became so optimistic and just lovely to be around. Eleanor was like a young adult, either living by herself as a child or an adult that was living by herself. She's supposed to be like somewhat older than Anna, but still young and like by herself. She really represented a lot of the depression that I had been going through at that point. And Anna was kind of this idealistic version of myself that I wish I could have been. So Anna and Eleanor was kind of like this representation of the battle inside of my head. Of course, I had to project onto my characters. And we have a return of the headless profiles. Of course, Alan. I feel like these sketchbooks are very redundant. Eyeballs, failed arms, failed legs, failed bodies. You gotta just push through the failures in order to get better. <laughs> Here's the return of I. I kind of got rid of that old hairstyle she had, got rid of that futuristic outfit. Here's more drawings of Anna. God, I really, really, really like this picture of her. At this point, I had been going back and forth between this sketchbook and the cursed sketchbook. So there's like a little bit of overlap of style here. I really got into Pokemon Go at this point. This was around like late 2015, I think. Drew a dabbing comic that we're just gonna quickly move. My semi-realism style is just, it needs work. But the other ones at this point, I think are pretty fleshed out and something that I can like stem off from. I would say a unique style and I was pretty proud of it. So yeah, there was that sketchbook. Lots and lots of struggling in this one. This summer that I made this sketchbook, I was just really trying hard to pump out as much as I could and I really do think that from the beginning to the end I saw a significant increase in my technique. I wouldn't say that it levels off after this sketchbook but I do think that the growth isn't as drastic. Okay before you say anything it's not supposed to look this ugly. I was thinking my sketchbooks are really bland. I see people on Instagram decorating their sketchbooks all the time. Why can't I? I wanted to decorate this with a gouache painting of Anna and Eleanor. Obviously never finished it. My dog got to it. It's just a mess, but I will say this is one of my favorite sketchbooks. This was a sketchbook where I completed my first Inktober challenge. I grew a lot in understanding anatomy and style. So yeah, let's just dive right back into it. So right off the bat, we start off with a character drawing of Anna Curry, still number one. OC drawings, I believe we've got I here, maybe Ebony? And definitely Shiriuri there. I remember drawing this one and feeling so deep. I wanted something that was dark in the window and absolutely absolutely nothing going around it. I thought I was so deep for drawing Eleanor in that. Here's where I tried out a time lapse for the first time. I drew this for my grandma and she's always been like one of my biggest supporters in art. Um, I just know she's watching this video. <laughs> so, um, hi. I built a tripod out of pencils that <laughs> I would suspend above the desk. I had to come up with what I had. So I used rubber bands and pencils to make a tripod. I just remember in general being pretty happy with whatever I was coming up with. It felt like everything was becoming more cohesive in my style. Clearly I was not like an apex artist, but there were some things that I was getting more comfortable with, like hands. Now here's where we start to get into my very first Inktober that I participated in. I finished this whole Inktober. I think I might've missed like one or two days, but I think I made a drawing for pretty much every single day that month. That's the only time I've ever been able to do that. I had to kind of cobble together the Inktobers because I ended up ripping them out of the book um, a couple of years later for building a portfolio, but I tried to cobble them together as, as well as I could. I don't have the first three days, but we can start off with the fourth day. I can tell that there's like a huge jump in style. I think at the time I'd only been drawing autonomously for like maybe two years. The hair shading I thought was great. I really enjoyed incorporating the Inktober number and I created this witch character that had a broomstick 
stick that was uh, serving as like a weapon and also a broomstick. I don't know. We can see here that she's got like a scar on her face. We've got the witch. She's younger in this one. And I really tried to practice hatching. I really, really took my time with this one and tried to make it look more polished. In high school, I was a pretty rushed, sloppy artist. I think this one really took a lot of patience for me. And I really like how the hatching came out. Still the problem with drawing collars when I didn't know what else to draw. This one I remember spending a lot of time on. I don't know what she's wearing though. I really enjoyed this one. I spent a lot of time trying to understand like what outfit she would wear if I had to put her in one. Whenever she was using it as a broom, it would be like, you know, the shape of a broom. But the second she used it as a weapon, the ends of the branches would turn into like razor sharp blades. I thought it was a really cool time. I don't know what's going on with the hands at all. Um, I also really like the outfit fit in this one. I really enjoyed the pinstripes for some reason and I thought this was a good articulation of what the broomstick looked like when used as a weapon. This is the princess character. I just wanted to introduce a second character. So she's kind of like the arch nemesis of this witch character and is supposed to be the villain of the like small plot that's going on in this inktober. I was practicing with like a dip pen at this point so you've got like really uneven ink. Here was Inktober Day 18, the first introduction of these two characters together. Um, and I remember being really, really proud of how these fingers came out. I don't really think that the anatomy holds up really well. Like, I don't know, maybe I'm being judgmental right now. Maybe I'm not being inclusive of all body types. The broomstick was always like the hardest to draw. I had to draw every single branch and it always, it never came out the way I wanted it to. There seems to be like Dragon Ball Z type dynamic between those two. Here's like probably the most cringy art I made at the time. Tried to show off a little bit more of the backstory of why they hate each other. More practicing with hatching. I really thought that I was badass with this one. I was not. Even at the time, I thought to myself, well, they're not like really lesbians. They're just like, you know, hamming it up for the crowd. Um, bestie? Okay, we've obviously got like a little bit more of a complex relationship between them two. Here we have another Inktober going into the witch as a younger character. I wanted to go for like a yin yang. So I wanted to show the longing from the princess to the witch that they have this really complex entanglement with each other. The witch is just completely unaware of. Here's one of the final Inktober pieces that I still have left. And back with the fucking collars again. To articulate a little bit more about like their dynamic, I had wanted to create a story in which witches were kings and queens in this class, in this like fake universe. And these princesses were actually like lower and class. grew up wanting to get revenge and essentially kill her. But the witch had grown and it led to this conflict where they were constantly trying to kill each other under like a total of their world. But the witch was very like, naive and closeted growing up and their clashes also led to like I should have known I was gay at the time. Here was the first drawing I made after Inktober had ended. It's still these characters, but I wanted to show like an alternate universe where they were actresses filming for this story. No matter what universe they're in, they're gonna be like best friends and lovers. Every time I would struggle, I would just go back to Anna. So I drew her again. And then here's another drawing I did. I believe the witch, I really enjoyed just getting a really, really rough idea out in pencil and then clearing up what I actually intended with the sketch in pen. I really like the flexibility of a messy sketch. I like to be able to get down a rough idea of what I want and then make decisions about the logistics of it later on. Here we've got more Anna and Eleanor art. I was really obsessed with drawing upset sad characters. I guess the edginess just never went away. Unfortunate. And here's when I was adamantly against furries. I am very pro furry now. I just thought it was so cute to have the witch and the princess in stupid little cat paws. Yeah, lots of nonsense in here. I guess I had decided her name was Evangeline. Here's when I started getting into Supernatural. So I was motivated to draw more like semi-realism at this point. I was trying to draw the Impala. I gave up. I ended up really liking this drawing of Eleanor, but Anna did not come out the way I wanted. So just forever a cute drawing of Eleanor by herself. Here's an interaction of Anna and I. I kept trying to draw I. I just really wanted her to be a character that I drew a lot, but I don't. I just don't think she's interesting enough. Maybe I can rejuvenate her character a little bit. I is so like introverted and shy, but Anna is just so out there that she would just kiss someone on the cheek for no reason, just because she really liked them. My little brother Louis started to become obsessed with Coraline. So we were rewatching the movie all the time and I really wanted to draw her character and I started getting into more um, media again. I think I was gifted like a pack of Prismacolor pencils. Here they are. 
I've had this for probably five years at this point. Then my go-to colored pencil pack. I will not go to any other colored pencil brand after finding out about Prismacolor Premier. Yet another boy in a dress. I didn't think it would make it all the way to 2017. Here's probably one of my favorite semi-realism drawings to this day. I was really, really into Supernatural at the time. So I finally graduated from the horrible dubstep anime phase and I was moving on to more classy things like Supernatural. Finishing up the sketchbook, I am trying to draw Anna throughout her childhood, growing up as a teen, and then becoming more open as she develops a relationship with Eleanor. Again, I really, really enjoy this sketchbook. I feel like it's really indicative of like my art style and growth. My style is pretty different now, but I really do think that this style is so nostalgic for me. It really feels like maybe one of my core art styles as an artist. This sketchbook, I have complex feelings about. I feel like most of the book in this sketchbook I struggled with a lot of art block. This was the moment where I really started to value art less and less in my life. I was starting to focus more on my job. I was struggling with changes, trying to get ready for college, taking AP classes, studying for SATs. So I just felt really frustrated with my style and my growth in this book, and I feel like you can tell. Definitely a lot less lighthearted than the last sketchbook. Still some great pieces in here that I really look back on with nostalgia. Okay, we start off with an absolute ass portrait of Cass. Wait, is that even Cass? I'm starting to think it's Dean. This is why I started doing anime again. <laughs> Obviously, we had to start off the sketchbook with more Anna. She looks meaner in this one. Eleanor, um, fighting the homophobes. And then we've got this cute little pan over to her being a nice little sunflower. Here's a new character that I had created. I don't remember her name, if she had one. I don't think there's any more Tokyo Ghoul fan art from here on out. Here's more drawings of this character. I really like the idea of her being like a supernatural character that has just this flowing floaty hair as if she's underwater constantly and she has these magenta eyes and I don't think she talks either. Here's a color study I tried to do. It doesn't look very good. It's pretty cringy. No one should be drinking coffee in this outfit. Here's Anna's fantasy about herself. It's this running gag in my sketchbooks that she is super flat chested but she wants to be like the super bodacious babe and the butt of the joke is that Eleanor is mega busty like mega mega busty but yeah overall there's a running joke that Anna just wants bigger boobs and the people around her who don't even want those boobs always have bigger boobs than her so she has these weird fantasies about having like ginormous boobs and is constantly putting in like implants to make herself seem more busty than she actually is. I will say the tone of this sketchbook is a lot angrier and messier. Not not really vibing with myself. I was pretty confused about like what I wanted with my art and I was pretty angry because it felt like something I had in invested like a lot of time into and I was still struggling with like basic anatomy and basic expressions. I felt like I had put in the work over the past few years and I shouldn't be struggling with this anymore. But you know, obviously the more you struggle with it, the more angry you get, the less things are pulled together. In my line art style, it's very messy, it's not articulate. Throwing up as much as I can in this sketchbook to try and make something good. I would say the past couple sketchbooks have been significantly better than this one. I still think that some of the anatomy here is pretty good. Here is this weird alternate universe where Anna as an adult is like super depressed, hates everything, hates people, hates anybody who interacts with her. I don't really know if this is a canon. I feel like that's pretty depressing. I was using my art style for a lot of commissions and class projects at this time, and I just didn't really have a lot of passion for any of them. I was trying to morph my art style into something more semi-realistic and um, more suited to other people's tastes, trying to really honor like the money that they had given me for this, which was really stressful for me. I don't really really enjoy doing commissions because it feels like there's so much pressure with that financial agreement. It just sucks all the creativity out of my body. With school projects in particular, I really enjoyed being able to be more creative, but it's definitely difficult to show that same creativity that I had been showing earlier in like a more industrial school setting. Obviously, Alan has made a comeback. I remember being really, really proud of this one. I thought it really articulated Alan's personality really well. I just really liked the line art style. Yeah, I really enjoyed having the Hatchie came out on this one. I really tried to take my time on it. Here was a comic I had tried to write about me seeing spiders while weeding outside. A very boring plot, but I thought it would be funny if I added all of those absolutely insane anime 
anime and cartoon effects to it. I thought that would be like absolutely hilarious. Here was when I started to flesh out a new persona. Gone are the days of the emo half bangs down look. Now we have bald goblin. I don't really know like how that was supposed to represent me at all. And I guess I was tired. Like I, I guess I had eye bags, but that was it. <laughs> I remember being so proud of the shoes here. Like they aren't like the most generic anime shoes ever. <laughs> Finishing out the sketchbook, we have a drawing of a random character who I never fleshed out again. Definitely a very chaotic sketchbook. Not one that I'm most proud of, but I will say that the next and last three sketchbooks that I have to show you guys are my favorite ones yet, and I'm returning back to my all-time favorite sketchbook, the Strathmore sketchbook. Before you say anything, I know, I also don't know what's going on here. I really do really wish that I had these super aesthetic sketchbooks. I am who I am. I wanted to flesh out a comic from D. Gray Man. Here's like the sexiest scientist in the story. He's so my type. But my style is obviously very different from how it used to be even in 2016. And I remember being really proud of this face because it got total disgust. And happiness. Total disgust. Happiness. I've also got like an Alan sketch here that I still think is so cute. He's so cute. Here's a comic that I had made about two boys in school. The joke was that his teacher found like a love letter that he had written and she's supposed to be like this super intense teacher and he was totally freaking out that she found out about his love letter. This, however, is probably my favorite character sheet that I've ever made. You know I had to start like every sketchbook with her. At the time, I had started trying to learn Japanese. My weeb phase never left and I really wanted to draw her in a ton of different styles to try and show off her character. Obviously she's enjoying a bowl of curry. This was also a pretty nostalgic art style for me. I really really enjoy this character sheet. It just takes so much time to make a character sheet like this. Huge time investment. I remember being really proud of the perspective here. The Harry Potter face came back for me. I'm such a huge Harry Potter fan. It's like a big part of my childhood and oh I had such a huge crush on Harry as a kid. We have a hard return of Anna and Eleanor. It's actually not Anna crying for the first time. It's Eleanor being vulnerable with her and I wanted to show off that side. Here's another scene where I tried to show Anna eating watermelon for the first time. I don't really know how realistic this is. I mean like what American grows up to be old enough to have boobs? but still not know what a watermelon is or a bathing suit. I think it's so cute to have Anna be this little shrimp that is just such an angry ball of fury whenever she's angry. It's just so cute to me. Really started to play around more with color theory. There was my beloved water bottle that I've drawn so many times. I don't know how many of those drawings I still have of that water bottle. I really just started being really eclectic with my sketchbooks again, but at least there's like a variety in medium. Really felt like I was growing into this art style. I really liked the balance between like a more cartoony style and an anime style. I actually have a sticker of this drawing. See? At this point, I had been kind of bouncing around homes in high school. I stayed with an aunt for a couple weeks. Hectic home life. I feel like you can kind of see it in the art. It's just really disorganized and chaotic. I was really still trying to throw up as many ideas as I could, trying to improve as quickly as I could. Just so frustrated with each idea that I couldn't really see them through to completion. I had designed a character based on the medulla for my AP psychology class. I designed a superhero. Here I was starting to play around with more semi-realism. I feel like I have a better grasp on like what faces are supposed to look like at least. Around 2018, I was given a Wacom because I really wanted to get into digital art and I had built myself a computer. I secretly downloaded CSP. You can pretty much find any program you want online. No credit card necessary, that is all I will say. And I absolutely fucking hated digital art. The Wacom tablet was one of those where you use the stylus on it and then it draws onto the computer. You can't see what you're drawing, you have to kind of just like intuitively draw with the tablet. It was just not a good fit for me. I was so used to like seeing what I was drawing and having that coordination, so I eventually just gave up on it. I have a couple of digital pieces from CSP that I'm more than happy to like share. A couple years later, my partner had an iPad that he let me borrow. I downloaded Procreate on it 10 times better than CSP or using the Wacom. Clip Studio Paint is like an amazing program that I would really love to revisit. Just not with that Wacom. The Apple Pencil on Procreate was like a million times better. I've only made a handful, but if you guys would like the tour of my digital art, let me know in the comments. I also have a whole portfolio book full of finished drawings. Later in like 2020 to 2022, I start using my sketchbooks as places to put finalized pieces. But for the most 
part. My sketchbooks are usually this playground where I get to just mess around with a ton of different ideas. So if you guys would like to see a tour of more like finished pieces that I have, just let me know. I am going back to my Tokyo Meow Meow roots here. Tokyo Meow Meow and Chibi Vampire were my two first manga. They really got me on the anime pipeline there. I really enjoyed this piece I made of one of my characters. I was making biology and psychology notes and for my AP biology class I created a couple characters to draw throughout the notes. Again, if you guys would like a tour on those notes, I have about 10 notebooks full of drawings just from these characters. Here we've got a Valentine's Day piece. I think this was the first time I drew Valentine's Day art. I still struggled with drawing more than one person. I think you can see their characters here and it's cute enough for me. This actually became a t-shirt design. I remember spending so much time on it with my pencil and I was really happy with that abstract look with the pencils. More stylistic experimentation. If anyone knows this photo shoot, please comment it down below. <laughs> Here we've got some Bulma fan art for Easter. I drew my character Anna trying on prom dresses because I was trying on my own prom dresses at the time and I wanted to know what she would look like. She would obviously have so much fun with a red dress. Here's a more fleshed out drawing of that character with the floaty blue hair that we had saw earlier. Um, I wanted to try and draw her again but quickly gave up. Got more Anna and Eleanor art. Here was my first and only attempt at creating a mermaid piece. I thought I was different and I wanted to draw a mermaid that that wasn't a cute mermaid. I wanted to draw an ugly mermaid. And here was my depiction of that. At this point, I had graduated high school. I moved out of my parents' house and I was living with my aunt. I was getting ready to go to college. I spent a lot of time making a lot of finished pieces that summer. I do love the stark blue against all the reds and yellows and oranges. Here was a drawing I did of my cousin Sim. Very stylistic, I will say. The hand is god awful. Everything else I think is still pretty good. Got more Hyoka fan art. Very few and far between, even though Hyoka is my my favorite anime. Here's another busty ideation of Anna. Very unrealistic portrait of her. We don't have to talk about this. The last sketchbook that I finished ended with a portrait of Anna, so I wanted this one to end with a portrait of Eleanor. Even though Eleanor and Anna kind of go hand in hand with their stories, I feel like Anna gets a lot more attention from me in terms of creations, but Eleanor still really means a lot to me as an artist, and I really wanted to give her a highlight by herself. Okay, we have the penultimate sketchbook. I really like how this sketchbook came out. Something about this Strathmore 9x11 just really brings out the fucking bangers in me. I really enjoyed working on this sketchbook. This one took me the longest to complete out of all of them. This is around the time when I got into college. It spans from late 2019 all the way up until late 2021. It takes a long time. Between college and the pandemic, I was really deprioritizing art, struggling with my identity in art. Um, and I think you can see that in the art style of the sketchbook, but still a lot of bangers in this one. So let's, let's just get right into it. Okay, right off the bat, probably one of my favorite pieces of all time. This is the princess character with her scythe. She's making a comeback in yet another maid outfit. I really took my time in getting the pose right, trying to get the anatomy right with the feet, and really trying to have a very fleshed out maid outfit for her. I'm just so happy with how this one looks. I just think it really shows a lot of her character. I love the dynamic pose that she has. I absolutely love this one. It's one of my favorites and I'm so glad that I started off the sketchbook on this note. I'm really trying to improve myself intentionally here, at least to begin with. In this sketchbook, I have noticed a lot of experimentation. Noticing myself really trying to branch out with different art styles, angles, interactions, hands and full bodies. I'm really trying to push past my limits here. Especially as 2020 hit, I took on a couple of Black Lives Matter commissions where 100% of the proceeds from the commissions would go towards a organization um, for each one. Here is a character sheet of Band-Aid Chan. I really, really enjoy this remake of her. I tried to make her super flirtatious, kind of like a player or kind of like a bimbo, honestly. She's kind of like the dark alter ego of Anna. She's what Anna wishes she could be. Here was my informal breakup with the violin. I've played the violin for over 10 years and I stopped a couple years ago when I got into college, but it was a big part of my life and I wanted to 
to address it. <laughs> Got another portrait of Eleanor. Tried messing around with washi tape here. Another great drawing of Anna and Eleanor that I really enjoyed. I feel like it really shows off their character and their good moments together. I feel like around 2019 and 2020, I'm really finally starting to understand how bodies are supposed to look, how to make them more fleshed out to look more realistic. Here's another drawing that eventually made its way onto a t-shirt. Here is the first time I practiced using Posca pens. My partner Jake had bought me a new pad for Christmas and I was finally able to experiment with some new art supplies. I really enjoyed using my coloring style on this portrait of Anna. I don't have that much patience for Posca markers, but this one I think really came out well. Here I tried to learn muscle anatomy. Okay, I think I did a pretty good job here and Shira Yuri makes a rare, rare reappearance here. Muscles are still not my favorite thing to draw. I've drawn a couple bodies that are muscular like this since and it's been a pain in the ass every fucking time. My partner Jake really tried to get me into Jojo. Here was my attempt at drawing Kira. Here's where Ebony makes a reappearance. We haven't seen Ebony in years at this point. She used to be this weird, vague, decapitated portrait of this vaguely music-based person, and now she's a slut. I really enjoyed this drawing. I don't show it a lot online because it's pretty messy, but I had a lot of fun playing around with that crayon mixed media look. I would really like to make more pieces like this. I, I really like how it came out. The New Horizons game was being teased around this point. There was a lot of Animal Crossing hype going around online. Here's when my partner tried to get me into D&D. I'm not very into D&D, but I tried. I created a character called Restitution. She was a druid and she was blinded by all of these horns growing out of her face. Here's an actual fleshed out drawing of Restitution. I just think she looks fire here. Love, love, love her character design. I would really like to draw more of her. Here's a drawing of Anna that I did. At this point, I've been drawing her like once a year, if that. So she makes a rare occasion and when she does come back, she's pretty different than what we're used to seeing of her. I remember hating this one, but I just hated it. I don't know, it was so horrendous to create. It was so frustrating to make. I'm not really sure why. We're only about halfway through the sketchbook, but we've gone over a year just in that small amount of pages. I really took a huge step back from drawing, kind of tried to give up on it. I was focusing on my biology career. This was just something I did as a way to kind of de-stress from the stressful environment in college. Here's the other character that I created, Ulfred. He's kind of this like dad character that's like a minotaur. Here's around the summer of 2021. This was very shortly before I ended up dropping out of college actually. I had a very frustrating semester in college. This was about a year after the pandemic had started. I had possibly the worst semester of my life. So I started to lean back more into art around this time, try to figure out like who I was again with art. Around this time, I started seriously considering opening an art shop. I made a new Instagram page. I started creating and brainstorming some products, trying to figure out like what it would take. I started posting on TikTok. This was one of the first drawings that I made for TikTok. I don't really like it, but I think the character design is pretty cute. It's pretty basic. I was still warming back up to the idea of drawing. I hadn't drawn in like months at this point, so I was super rusty. I had originally wanted to start a YouTube channel last summer, a year and a half ago, in summer of 2021, that I wanted to start a YouTube channel, but eventually I had decided that I just wasn't the type of person who could post on camera. I went back to doing TikTok and Instagram. This was a tutorial on how I draw with Sharpies, and this was kind of like a thank you for, I wanna say like a thousand or 3,000 likes on TikTok. Here was a thank you for 666 followers. Just lots and lots of TikTok drawings that summer. I really wanted to make community out of TikTok and Instagram. This was a monster OC that I created for TikTok. Their name is Aster. I asked TikTok what to name them and that's the name that they picked. Most of these drawings were for TikTok. It was still really emotionally exhausting to draw for myself. This was one of the few drawings that I made for myself. It's clearly still not finished. I really like the perspective and anatomy in this one. It really feels like a good throwback to that last sketchbook that we went through where I was really just having fun with it. And we're finishing off the sketchbook with one of my sticker designs that I created. It's Lisa Frank inspired. It's so awesome when the vision comes out almost perfectly. This was created in Procreate, so we're really proud of the sticker. Okay, so this sketchbook is a weird one. There was really a huge shift in identity throughout the entire sketchbook. I mean, if you remember, we started off as somebody who had just graduated and who was not even in college yet. And by the time we finished this sketchbook, I had dropped out of college and was pursuing art as a career. Totally insane to me how much it had changed just in this one sketchbook, but I'm so glad that I picked art back up and just kept moving forward. So let's move on to the very final sketchbook, where I am today, who I am as an 
artist right now. Okay, so this is the sketchbook I'm working on right now. Totally different from all of these other sketchbooks. My identity and um, what I know about myself has evolved so much over the past few years, and I feel so much more confident in who I am. Clearly, I enjoy the color pink, if you haven't noticed yet, and I'm really going all in with a lot of my anime roots, just embracing a lot of who I am as an artist, where I came from, and where I want to go. We've got plenty of stickers from one of my good friends, Carly. She makes amazing stickers on Etsy, and you should definitely check her out. I've also got some great Link stickers, Madoka Magica stickers, two pieces of media that are really near and dear to my heart. I absolutely love Link. He is everything. Okay, starting off lame. I did not really have a plan for the first page of the sketchbook. All artists struggle with the first page. Like, what is the first page going to be? I started this sketchbook at the beginning of 2021, so I hadn't dropped out yet in this timeline. Even though the last sketchbook had ended with me dropping out, this one goes back a little bit. I think I had started up a new sketchbook because I wanted to separate personal stuff from projects. That very quickly went back away. You guys have seen there's been a couple sketchbooks where I've kind of jumped around a little bit. So this is another example of that. This one kind of goes back another eight months to a project that I worked on for one of my feminist classes. It was for my intro to women's gender and sexuality course, and I was creating a piece about my feelings with activism, burnout, white supremacy, pop feminism, all that stuff. Okay, so this was my thumbnail, and this was the finalized piece. It's always so fun to me to see how so many of the elements are still the same. While this maintains being complete and utter fucking gibberish. This was one of the first major art pieces that I had made since I started college two years prior. Of course, with every new sketchbook, I have to draw Anna. Here's another idealistic version of her who's super busty. That running joke just will not stop with me. She's grown up so much in the past seven years. And then here we have a huge jump. I went back to the other sketchbook and finished that one out. And when I came back to this one, it was October of that same year. At that point, I had been out of school for a month or so, and I was just all in with my art career Shiduga. I had been creating pieces for TikTok and I was so excited for Inktober. I really wanted to go all in and just make a bunch of media because it was the best way for me to grow my account at the time. This. Inktober, once again, really shifted how I feel as an artist. Um, we start off with a pinup of a bunny girl for the first prompt. Really enjoy how the line art came out in this one. Um, this one's definitely been a favorite. I really enjoy the style in this one. I love that pinup style. I've always been the type of person to collect calendars, and at the time I had a pinup calendar, I really got a lot of inspiration from it. I really enjoy that pinup style, and I think you can tell in these drawings. Day two was fruit, and so I took a BuzzFeed quiz. <laughs> Do you guys still use BuzzFeed? Oh my god. I took a BuzzFeed quiz on which strawberry shortcake character I was, and it was this bitch. I don't really know what her name is. I want to say she's like cheesecake or something like that. It felt kind of stale to me. I still kind of enjoy how it came out. The next Inktober piece was Monster, so of course I had to draw Draculaura. Still one of my favorite pieces of all time. It took me eight hours to make this one. I hand drew everything with a Micron liner. I wish I had just gotten a bigger marker, but it shows different pigments with different types of markers, so I just kept with the same fine liner. It looks great. What can I say? The next prompt was School, and the only thing I could think of was Tomy. Personal I thought it came out really badly at the time. I was not impressed with it. In fact, I was pretty irritated with it. I wish it looked more like the Junji Ito version. We had Marine and Kimono. I was really happy how his shoes came out, even though he kind of looks like a stick figure in this, but men are just not my thing to draw. This is the devil prompt. I wanted to draw a lot of symmetry in this one, and I had a ton of fun. This was definitely out of my style, but I think it was just a ton, a ton of fun for me to draw. Next, we've got Bedlock which is a type of belly dancing, I believe? Or it's the outfit. I hate this drawing. I don't like looking at it. There are some parts of it that I do like, like the little texture in the dress. We experiment, we fail. That's the life of an artist. Next up, we have the prompt Kid Core. It's been over a year, and I still intend on making a sticker sheet out of this one. It's probably not coming anytime soon. I really enjoyed doing that 90s Kid Core font for this one. This one was E-Girl. I wanted to draw a chunkier E-Girl. She looks so badass. Now, I think this one, out of all the Inktober pieces, pieces is by far everyone's favorite. This was the prompt fairy. I wanted to go for a renaissance art nouveau look 
with this one. You know those fairy art pieces that you would find like in the early 2000s, those little fairy ceramic statues and poster art. So I really wanted to emulate that art style with this piece. I really enjoyed working on this one. I've never enjoyed drawing scenery more than I did for this one. And this was the last one that I did for Inktober. I ended up drawing way fewer prompts than I wanted to, but these were really sucking the life out of me. And at the time I was still searching for a job. I was still balancing social media and learning how to do social media effectively. So I just didn't have the time or the mental space to do more than like one prompt every few days. So I ended up doing, I think about 10 to 15. And this was the final one, The Witch. And I really like how this one came out, especially the, the hippie 70s type fan art that I tried to emulate. I really enjoyed playing around with the textures of the heart, putting like a galaxy solar system into her hat. This one was just really a joy to do. Making the skirt as 3D as I could, I felt like I was really trying to go back to my anime roots here. This was a character that I had created just for fun. She's just like this busty Roger Rabbit type character. She's totally my type, by the way. Here's when I started drafting up my Pokemon piece that I made for Jake for Christmas. Um, maybe I can show the digital piece up here, but I really enjoyed working on this one as well. I was practicing Procreate and also drawing like a trading card and an animal. This was a Pokemon version of our cat, Amethyst. All of it was out of my comfort zone and I just had a blast making that one. It just felt like I was learning new things and just learning how to use Procreate in a way that I never knew how to use before. It was a great experience. More perspective work. This was kind of a gross period in my sketchbook. I was kind of like a little art block. I was working on some more commissions. Here's the piece that I think really made me blow up on TikTok. I created a character. I really enjoyed making this character sheet. I really wanted to make a character sheet that was as extra as possible based on this pair of butterfly boots that I had seen on Pinterest. So I created an entire character based on that and TikTok loves this character. So I've heavily shown her on both of my social media pages. She was just a joy to make. I don't know what it is with my fixation on blonde girls. They just, I just love it. Here I was um, trying to make some tutorials for TikTok, how to draw bodies, how to draw shoes. Here's where I started drafting a draw this in your style piece. At this point I had hit 1K on Instagram because the picture of this character had absolutely blown up on there. I think it got almost a million views. I had gone from having like maybe 300 followers on there to having over 6,000 within a month. It was absolutely insane. And I wanted to draw a 1K Draw This In Your Style as a thank you for that. I hit 10K on Instagram before the 1K Draw This In Your Style had ended. So I immediately started working on a new one. This was a piece that I had worked on once I started getting into markets. Um, I remember I drew this in Columbus. That was to date one of the worst markets I've ever worked. <laughs> That's a story for another day. This was another character that I had created for TikTok. I believe it was based on like a face filter challenge and I don't remember their name either. I really enjoyed creating them. I redrew some of the aspects because I had left out some of their traits like the pearl necklace, some of the hair and lip color stuff. So I redrew them. Obviously I had to draw rouge. At this point we were hitting the summer of 2022 and I really wanted to improve my art style. So I started doing daily drawing. I would give myself 30 to 60 minutes every day just draw something. A pretty eclectic mix here. I have no idea what's going on with this shoe and you can tell that I've drawn something completely different for each day. So I was really enjoying playing around with new mediums. It gave me a lot of content to post. And yeah, I was practicing hand studies, a six fan arts challenge, just really trying to make as much stuff as I could for TikTok at the time. Here's the next time that I drew abs. I absolutely love this one. And I won't say why. Here was a character that I had created based on a friend's drawings, Stevie, from Sky Blue Skeleton on TikTok and Instagram. Great artist. So for the 10k draw this in your style I recreated that original monster character. I wanted to go with this trend of making characters that I had made on social media and I really enjoyed the redraw of this one. Just a really fun prompt and I think it really got everyone engaged. I found a picru and I redrew that for my profile picture on Instagram. Everybody really enjoyed that one. Here was one of the last drawings I made for Instagram before my account got taken down. This was a drawing for Ray EXE's 10k draw this in your style. It was a fantastic drawing challenge. So here we're going back to a little bit more sketching, more link drawings. And this was one of the last drawings that I made for TikTok specifically before I stopped using TikTok. It was a redraw of my 2017 art style. I had pretty sketchy line art, pretty messy coloring, which you didn't really get a whole lot of in my sketchbooks, but very quick messiness. And I tried to emulate like the eyes and facial structure that I tried to draw back then. And this was the last artwork that I have worked on since. Working on some logos for my shop and drawing some <laughs> That's where I'm at right now. I've got about half of the book left to go. 
I wonder what the rest will lead us to. Obviously, I'll show you guys when I finish. This is the meaty, meaty stack that you and I have traversed today. It was a very long journey, but if you're still here, I'm very happy that you made it this far. If anyone is still watching, I wanted to say thank you so much for bearing with me for this entire sketchbook video. It's my first video that I've ever made in my life and it's probably gonna be really, really long. I thought maybe a sketchbook tour would be a great way for me to introduce myself on a new platform. About a week ago, my email was hacked, taking down my entire Instagram account. I built up about 25,000 people on there and I was really starting to have a sense of community on there. It was a huge loss. I think I lost most of my progress with my shop this year, but I want to see it as a highlight in my career and try and make this the best thing that ever happened to me. I think what I've been looking for on these platforms, TikTok and Instagram, is a sense of community that is just so hard to facilitate on there these days. I had my mic facing the wrong way. <laughs> I'm gonna make like every mistake that you can make. Anyways, with the way the algorithms work on these platforms these days, it's nearly impossible to curate an audience or a community. And that's the whole reason why I started posting my art online in the first place. I wanted to have people to share my journey with and to make art for people that really enjoyed what I made. I'm gonna move forward with the intention of creating that audience on YouTube. So truly, if if you liked this video enough to stay this long, I am so, so thankful, so thankful that you made it this far. So I'm just gonna end the video suddenly like this.